Now, the basics of every single story is that every good story has good characters, and they all live in a place, and they all have problems they're trying to solve. That is literally the description of every single story ever. And we're going to go through each of those in a second so you can write your own good story. In today's lesson, we are going to write almost 1,000 words. This part of the writing is the longest, the part where you're writing about the problem. That is very, very long. And honestly, most people don't finish that part, right? It's very long. Um, the characters are going to work with a problem. That's like 200 words. They're going to try to solve the problem. That's like 200 words. And then they're going to fail. And that's maybe like 50 words. Then the characters are going to get a new plan. So they're going to talk to each other, come up with a new plan, get some new resources, get some new skills. That's 200 to like 500 words. And then they're going to try the new way, which is another 200 words. And then they're going to finally succeed. Like every story since the beginning of time, there's a problem. They try to solve it. They fail. They try again. They succeed. That's it. So when we, when we look at getting this started, first you've started with some characters in a setting. But what you didn't know is that there's already a problem sitting there with those characters, with that setting. And if I look closely at each one of those books I showed you, we can talk about how that is. So when we look at this book, Drama, a uh, really great book. It's a graphic novel, really popular. And in this book, before you even open the pages, the characters are already experiencing a problem. The main character in this book, well, she has a crush on somebody. Like, that's the main problem. And she doesn't know how to deal with those feelings. And in fact, she has a lot of relationships in this book between her friends, between her teachers, between her parents. And all of those relationships are just going crazy. And she's trying to figure out how she can get what she needs out of these relationships. Um, if we look at The Last Kids on Earth, there's a problem already there. By the time these kids meet each other and they're going around, the world is already covered in zombies. So in this book, the problem is other characters, the zombies. And then finally, the Dogman series. In the Dogman series, well, the problem already happened before this book even began. Before the reader started reading about the first things, there were two characters, a police officer and a dog, and they were both injured on the job. And so the doctor said, to save your lives, I'm going to sew you both together. Like, it's so ridiculous, and that's why it's hilarious. It's just a funny comic book for kids. But the problem in Dog Man is that the police officer is half dog. Whatever happens in any of the Dog Man series, it's because Dog Man is distracted by his dog abilities. He tries to go chase a criminal and he's distracted by some bones, right? Um, same thing with drama. The protagonist has a crush on someone. How do I deal with these feelings? On The Last Kids on Earth, the problem is zombies. Simple and to the point. So before you started reading, the problem was already there. The problem is waiting. You can start your narrative writing about characters and setting. Your reader should know that there's a problem about to happen. Any kind of style you want to do, it's still the same. The problem is just about to happen based on the problem sitting there waiting. But now, the problem has to get worse. And there's a few ways we can go about making the problem worse. One of the popular ways that a lot of good writers use is they split the characters into different groups. The most common way writers do that is they have good guys and bad guys, right? And we've seen this done from Tom and Jerry cartoons, the Avengers, you know, to the movies you see on Hallmarks. There's a good character and a bad character. But we can get a little more complicated than that. The problem can get worse because the winners have now become the losers, or the losers are now the ones who are winning. So it's groups of people that cause the problems between each other. And this holds true for a lot of different situations. We have mutants versus humans, sure. And in fact, there's even different groups of mutants, aren't there? Uh, we can have wizards versus muggles, and there's actually different groups of wizards. So you can make the problem worse by splitting your characters into different groups and having those groups have conflicts with each other. You can also make the problem get worse because there's one single character who causes all the problems. And if you know this character, 
Phineas and Ferb just go about minding their own business, doing their own thing, and Candace is the one who causes all the problems. She's the one who says, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to make Jeremy like me. She has all these, she has her own problems, which causes problems for other people. And the audience enjoys it and they just laugh. But sometimes there's one thing that causes the problem. And if we're still talking about Phineas and Ferb, well, this guy here, my good friend Doofenshmirtz, well, he makes a lot of inventions. And those inventions are usually the one thing that causes problems in the story. So that's just a few ways. So there can be one character who causes the problems. There can be one thing that causes the problems. But each character has to have their own reasons, and they have to have their own motivations, and they have to have their own problems in order to move the story along. So I gave you a sheet then that looks like this. Go take out that sheet right now. And this sheet is just for you to start thinking about it. So the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to list the character's name right here. And then you're going to describe that character in a short, quick way, just so you remember what character you're talking about. And then you're going to write down their motivations in this box. You're going to write down what do they want. And then finally you're going to brainstorm some problems that they might have. And just... This is just a quick list to kind of get you going, and then you're just going to go down to the next line and do it to your next character. So this could be on a story you already started, or you could start with a brand new story and a brand new set of characters. It doesn't matter. But I need you to fill out this form and list the characters, give a quick description, tell me what they want and their motivations, and then possible problems that they could have in your story. So I'm going to just show you mine for an example, and then we're going to go through there. So the first thing that you do is, Write your name on your paper. Now, my name is Amara Lee, and so I love my name, so I gotta write it beautifully wherever I go. Your name is beautiful. Write it beautifully on the top line, okay? Then we're gonna start with our first character. I think I'm just gonna call my first character Audrey. Beautiful name, nice lady. She's a mom, and she's 46 years old, and she's a nurse. That's just a vague description. I could tell later the color of her eyes, the color of her hair, what race she is, how tall she is. <clears throat> right now, I just need to know she's a mom, She's 46, and she's a nurse. And her motivations are simple. She wants to pay the bills. She wants to spend time with her kids. And like every mom, she just wants her kids to grow up to be good people. Now she's got some problems. And like every mom who's 46 who works full time, I'm going to bet she's tired, and she's busy, and she doesn't have a lot of friends. So when I'm, I'm kind of imagining this character. So she comes home from work, and she looks around. She's got dishes to do, and she's got lawns to mow and laundry to put away and dinner to make and she's got all the kids to help with the homework turn the tv off like, okay I'm busy I got all these things to do so she doesn't have a lot of friends to help her out because well all her friends are her age and all her friends are moms and all her friends are nurses so it's not like she can call up somebody she she's too busy in her life right now to have a lot of friends okay well you know that's just life because right now Audrey working at the hospital just had a patient who passed away one of her patients has died and so now she has to come home to her kids when she's tired with bills to pay and she wants to spend time with them and she wants them to be good people, but she's tired and she's busy. And now she just, she just wants to worry about this patient who passed away. She just wants to take a minute to grieve, but she doesn't have a minute to grieve. So now she has a problem. And here comes the next character. Theo. Theo is just a neighbor. He's a kid. I haven't decided yet if I want him to be a boy or like a teenager. I'm not I'm really sure yet. But then there's this, and he's, and he's just kind of annoying. So the other character is an annoying child kid thing named Theo. Now Theo, his motivation, the thing that Theo wants is to not be bored. Theo is very, very bored right now. And generally, Theo is kind of tired and he doesn't have a lot of friends. Now, he doesn't have a lot of friends because he's left alone by working parents. Like, he has two parents, and they're working all day. So he's kind of alone most of the day. School gets out at 3, and his parents don't get home until 6.30, so he's got all this time on his hands and no one to stop him. Do you kind of see how there's a problem coming along? Now, Theo just has one big problem that's kind of brewing in the background. He has a really big assignment due that he's avoiding. What do you think Theo, living next door to Audrey is going to do over the fence to try to avoid doing his assignment. <laughs> so I just, I mean, I just randomly picked these characters. You can pick any character, describe it in any way, figure out what do they want, and what kind of problems they could encounter in your story. That's basically it. 
That's all you got to do. So you're going to think about it. You're going to fill out the chart in your own way. And that you don't have to do any writing yet unless you're inspired. But all you need to do is this chart filled out. You should have at least two major characters and all together five characters. So the other three characters can be like minor characters. Fill out this chart and then you are ready to do the writing in the next video where we will describe the problem, we'll show how it gets worse, and we'll solve it. See you next time. <laughs>